Christmas! So much to do! Oh man, I gotta get all those presents ready for my family. They love me so much, I can't believe it. Hello? Do you know who this is? Uh, no? Well, you better listen carefully because I've got- Wait a sec, is this Jimmy? That guy's crazy. No, this isn't Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy isn't that mean. Oh, this must be Luke then. I'm not anyone, you don't know me. This is definitely Kenny. No, wait, Wallen. <sighs> Well, you best listen carefully, because I've got Santa here, and I'm not going to let him get away. Oh my god. Neil Patrick Harris. Hey, this is serious. If you don't start listening to me... What? It's Christmas again, and you know what that means? It's time for another holiday-themed video. Every once in a while, Santa shows up in a video game. It's really subtle most of the time, but he does. And I'm here to tell you guys what my favorite Santa appearances in video games are. Bullet! That was dumb. It's the top 10 secret Santas in video games! Let's be fair, a Santa cameo isn't exactly a common occurrence. You can't just pick up any old game off the shelf and pop it in, and you're just gonna see Santa there going, Hey there, I'm Santa Claus. I don't know why I talk like this. You, you're my naughty list. Sometimes, it takes a keen eye to see Santa Claus. Like in Mortal Kombat, the game where you brutally murder everyone. Yay! First, before I show you this, I have to choose one of the most festive characters, Sub-Zero. <laughs> Let's just say he's Snow Ordinary Man. He's ice cold. They've always liked putting things in the background of Mortal Kombat games. I mean, just look at the flaming guy. There's also like a pterodactyl thing? I, g I guess? Oh, and let's not forget Santa Claus. But lucky for me, I loaded up the wrong Mortal Kombat and played it for way too long before I realized it was Mortal Kombat 1 I was supposed to be playing. That's the last time I used my memory to do things. So I loaded up Mortal Kombat 1 and I swear to God, I sat there for like an hour trying to get Santa to show up and he just never showed. What a jerk. What's supposed to happen is that Santa shows up and glides across the moon all silhouetted. But he didn't. Who to say I think he has showed up all willy dilly whatever he wants to? I mean some of us have a YouTube show to do and we really appreciate it if he showed up for like one second instead of making me wait around all day. <laughs> show up Santa! You know there's supposed to be other silhouettes of things showing up as well, not just Santa Claus. So you can imagine my frustration after sitting there for about an hour trying to get him to show up. What I did find out though is that this is a reoccurring easter egg that actually happens in Mortal Kombat 9 as well. So I guess I can show you that. And then I also found this picture proving that I am right and he does show up in the first one. He just couldn't catch it on camera. And now, an unedited commentary of me waiting for Santa to show up. Come on, Santa, you can show up anytime now. I'm just gonna sit here until you show up. Ah, uh, Santa. Don't do this to me. You can't do it. You can't do it. I believe in you. I believe in Santa. Your red clothes are really nice. Uh. Somewhere deep below the ocean waves lies the top secret headquarters of FI5H. Reporting for duty is FI5H's top agent. James Pond is licensed to kill. What's a James Pond? I don't know. I had to, I had to freaking look, look it up on the, the internet box. Apparently he's like James Bond, but Pond. B 
because he's a fish. In the early 90s, Electronic Arts actually published a game series called James Pond. There were multiple games in the series, but the game we're talking about today is James Pond 2, codename Robocod. Wait. Is that really the name? Something fishy is afoot in the Arctic. Elvin, Dr. Baby has captured the toys! Murray, and has kidnapped our friends. What is going? Only Robocod can help us now. Well, there you go. That's the story of this game. We good? And then they get wrapped up in candy wrapper. And then it talks about chocolate biscuits. James Pond 2 is kind of like a traditional platforming game. You start a level. Get to the end of the level! Come on, we ain't got no fancy anything here. What is cool about this game is that it basically takes place all in the North Pole. So you see some really weird stuff. Like there's some card birds. There's like a walking gingerbread guy. There's also like a couple of bathroom levels. I didn't know soap could float like that. I guess you'll never drop it then. <laughs> then you know, I was just like flying around in a bathtub. You know, I also fought a really big teddy bear, that was pretty cool. But most importantly, the final boss is Frosty the Snowman, and I fought and killed his ass. But it was actually the doctor. And then he just kind of walks outside. But wait, who's that on the horizon? It's Santa! And he crushes him with a toy bag. That's justice. And then James Pond and Santa ride off. And it's magical. Well done! The world is safe! For now. Hey, do you guys remember Death Spank? Death Spank. Oh, never mind. Death Spank was kind of an interesting game. Now, I do in fact remember playing the original one when it came out, but I never had actually played the second one before. And if you've never played these games before, they're basically just action-adventure loot hoarding games. Kind of in the realm of Diablo or Torchlight. Except for the twist is it tries to be funny. Like me. So as it turns out, Death Spank gets his powers from, well, a thong. I mean, who doesn't get... Their powers from a thong, when you think about it, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm so good at killing stuff. <laughs> oh, man, yeah, I'm so good that I die. And if you haven't guessed it by now, a little while into the game, you'll stumble upon Santa Claus. Hello again, Santa. And after some rather lengthy conversations back and forth, you'll end up fighting his coal monster. That's not in you, like, there's a real coal monster. I see you here. And after defeating him, you slice him in two, and take his thong. Gross. Toe jam and Earl. Wow, check out those funky beats. So in Toe Jam and Earl, you play a couple of aliens that have crash landed on planet Earth. Like, literally. They crashed from space. It doesn't make any sense, but they did it. I mean, they were flying so fast that they had to avoid meteors and shit. So now I'm walking around as Toe Jam trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> Wiener. And believe me when I say that's harder than it sounds. And I do start to notice that there's a heck of a lot of presents lying around. So it must be the holidays. So I kept walking around for a little while, I found this thing. Oh sure, yeah, these are all over the place. Yeah! This looks really a lot like Earth. No, it does. It has that grass. Getting back on track though, every once in a while you'll see a mysterious dude. He's got a big bag and some goggles on. And of course it's Santa Claus. You don't want to spook him though, so you have to sneak up on him. And then he drops his presents. Yeah, jetpacks away. Santa! <laughs> If there's any company that knows how to make a great role-playing game, it's Squaresoft. Nearly every subsequent RPG they put out was setting the bar. And it was no different with Secret of Mana. Now, honestly, I prefer Seeking Densetsu 3 to Secret of Mana. It's just better. But you can't really own that legitimately. At least an English version, anyway. And it doesn't have Santa Claus in it. 
So, secret of mana. Now about halfway through the game, you'll end up at an ice palace. The ice palace has bad guys, watch out. Oh no, ghosts. God, I hate these freaking slime things. They just keep multiplying. And the most annoying enemy in the world goes to slime. Come on down. Eventually, you come to a room where someone tells you to be gone. It gives you a choice, I chose hell no! Whoever I'm talking to got really upset though. And before you know it, you're fighting a Frost Gygus. This guy's actually pretty tough, but mostly annoying because he just disappears and floats around as ice for half the battle. He come back and Pokemon, he's off again! So much fun, so much fun, run again, circles waiting for the guy to come. So much fun, so much fun, a great again, Frost Sabers, that's not helpful. Yeah! I got him! And it turns out the Frost Gygus was actually Santa! Rudolph's here too! It's a Christmas miracle! We did it! We saved Christmas! Now it's time to talk about Shenmue even though you haven't played it. Oh please, come on, just come out and say it. Sadly dismissed and mostly forgotten. Believe me when I say to you, it's not all that rotten. But I must confess this is as far as I go, because rhyming is difficult. On with the show. No! Shenmue. Now this is actually the first time I played Shenmue, so I'll be honest, it was a little difficult for me to get into it. The controls are kind of weird. It's kind of hard to understand what everybody's saying. Please don't. And it takes a long time before the game is even started. Oh my god, I don't no care. Intention. But to be fair, I'm here for only one reason. Santa Claus. Came out of nowhere. And as it turns out, there's a Santa Claus Easter egg in this game. It's actually quite well hidden to too. You actually have to set the date of your Dreamcast to the 25th of December. And then randomly when you're Excuse walking me. around some of the cities, Merry he'll just show Christmas. up. Ho, ho, ho. Yokosuka Bar is just the place for a few drinks. Oh, he wants me to drink alcohol. That's kind of weird. Well, I can't see no Santa Claus. You want to get on that naughty list? Rogue Legacy! I like it. <laughs> now, if you haven't played Rogue Legacy, it's certainly one of the better games you'll play this year. The goal is pretty simple. Go into the dungeon, get a bunch of gold, die. Upgrade your guy, get some new equipment, go into the dungeon, die. Die, die, die. Die! What's great though is that every time you die, you get to choose a new heir, and they always have different detrimental effects. They almost always change up the gameplay in some way. Some of them are awesome. Yeah! Look at me, I'm a giant! Die. Some of them suck. Well. This blows. And some of them are just silly. Oh, so nostalgic. Oh, so old. So great. So fresh. But of course, the main attraction, the reason it's on this list is because Santa. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that Santa. Is Rudolph? That's Santa. I don't even care if that's exactly like Mortal Kombat. Does it look like I care? It's because I don't. <laughs> of Skyrim is filled with many things. Santa isn't one of them. Well, that is unless you mod your game. And all questions of legitimacy aside, this is actually gonna be pretty fun. In my scouring of the Steam Workshop, I found a pretty promising mod. And it was called Santa Was Coming to Town. Sounds like the kind of thing that I wanted. Look who it is, it's Santa. Oh no, oh god, all oh, the reindeer. What happened to them? Well, it appears that Santa's had a little bit of an accident and our troubles aren't about to end there. Bandits. Good thing Santa's a mother effing bandits. Wait. There we go. He pretty much single handedly destroys anything that I could come up against. Wielding powerful frost magics, he devours his enemies whole. By like whacking them and stuff. Though he was having some trouble actually hitting people. I don't know what that was about. A for effort. And if you know me at all, you know that the next thing I'm gonna do is take him to a much stronger enemy. Enjoy. Oh no, giants! Frost Bolt! Got him! Alright, Santa, you got this! I wanna see some grade A frost magics. You take those giants on, you show them no remorse, you do what must be done! Uh oh. Bro, 
run away! Ha <laughs> ha, they'll never get me up here. Do something! Santa! That was dumb. Ha <laughs> ha, I bet you don't have anything to say about that, do you, giant? Classic dumb, stupid giant. What's he even doing there? Santa! Sims 2 rap! Yo, 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 I like the Sims a lot. Why don't you just give me a yacht? I've always enjoyed The Sims. There's something so relaxing about it. Well, that is until you actually start doing everything that you would normally do in your normal life and beyond, and then you realize that it's gotten way too meta, and that you could have been bettering yourself the entire time, and then you just get depressed, and then the darkness comes, and then... Oh, did you know that there's a holiday pack for The Sims 2? It's pretty good. It's basically just a collection of holiday items that you could decorate your house with. But amongst these items is a grand secret. If you buy a Christmas tree and turn it on at night and have one of your Sims bake some Christmas cookies, Santa will have a chance to appear. <laughs> oh, I've got a good feeling about this. Oh, look at Santa. There he is. Oh, no. Wait. Wait, where are you going? No! He came too early, I wasn't asleep! Oh wait, he's coming back! Wait a second. That's not Santa. That's not Santa. That's not Santa. Well, at least I think the worst is over. I'm just gonna go. Well, let's try this again. I think luck will be in my favor. And as luck would have it, he did show up again. And you know, you can learn a lot about Santa by just watching him. The Watching of Santa Claus. Part 1. Cookies. Part 2. Go and pee repeatedly. Part 3. Laughing in a corner. <laughs> <laughs> Part 4, The Pee Break. Well, as you can see, Santa's not the most interesting person to actually watch, but he did leave me a race car. Alright, bro, bro. Ah oh, yeah, Scribble Knots! You know, conceptually, Scribble Knots is one of the most amazing ideas. Solve puzzles with your imagination. Write anything, solve everything. What a tagline. That's the tagline, right? Now, all the time it might not work, but what's so great is that if you're playing alongside your friends, you can actually solve puzzles differently than they did. It's one of those games that makes you feel so smart and so dumb at the same time. You might end up breezing through some of the puzzles in an instant, but then one puzzle will just get you, and then it gets in your head, and you just overthink it, and then you just you die. What do you need, Knight? Oh, a family. Well, that was obvious. <laughs> it wasn't obvious. And what's even more fun is trying to think up things that are just really absurd. Like right now, I have to complete this quest to bake a pizza. So let's think up some of the ingredients. Pepperoni, yeah, of course. Gotta get some dough in there. Oh, we'll definitely need some cheese. Now I need to think up a secret special ingredient. Hmm. Buggers! Doesn't that look great? Hmm. And then he ate it. But of course, there is a little bit of holiday cheer in Scribble Knots as well. If you use your notepad to type in Santa, he'll actually appear. Not only that, but he'll give you a present. All right, let's do it. Is this some sort of joke? I mean, it basically seems like he just has a small rotation of items to give you. I got coal a couple times, that's for sure. One time he gave me a Game Boy, but then he took it and ran off. Then one time he gave me a diamond engagement ring. Whoa, come on, Santa, take me to dinner first, at least. So that's what I decided to add some adjectives to make my Santa a really sweet Santa. And here was the result. So first we make him writable. Santa Claus is coming to town. So how about writable sentient flying Santa? Let's not forget ghostly and fast as well. That's probably gonna be good. Yeah! Santa! Hey, 
there, thanks a lot for watching my video. If you're watching this around Christmas time, then Merry Christmas. And if you aren't, then maybe you should have been. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Twitter and all of the socials. And of course, we have some videos here for all you newcomers out there. Last year's holiday themed video, top 10 winter levels, and of course, the top 10 swords in video games. So if you haven't seen them, why not give them a click? Don't forget to check out hiddenblock.com for all your silly video gaming shenanigans. And a special thanks to Brutal Moose for his guest appearance and Mr. Bubble Mike for letting me use some of his 8-bit renditions. Those links in the description below. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe. I just want to take this time to thank you all for watching. Until the next time.